Hi, I'm Trevor Conkergood from Sunset Stitches, and welcome to today's video, which is going to be a special recording for people that own the FTCU software for our FTCU uh, weekly video series. And my topic for today that I've selected is the um, cool type of stitch type that we can create. I called it the swirl satin stitch type, but I think technically it's called the spiral satin stitch type, but it creates a really interesting effect because basically it fills in your shape going around and around and around, creating a spiral pattern. And so yeah, that's what we're gonna learn about today. And I think to get started, I'm just gonna go ahead and pop up my FTCU software. And I've already got this design open and on the screen. And so if I even just go ahead and click play on my slow redraw, you'll see right away how it kind of stitches round and round and round and it fills in uh, the columns of the letters with this special stitch pattern called the spiral pattern. And that stitch pattern is found down here called a spiral satin stitch type. So yeah, um, let's go ahead and start kind of from the beginning. So I'm just gonna click on a new workspace, click on my text tool and click on to create a basic horizontal text segment and click on the workspace to get started. And so it'll create the words my text and whatever font you most recently used. And this effect can be done with any font. Let's put that, it can work with any shape basically. Um, that said, the a little bit larger shapes, like two or four, five, you know, four and five and six millimeter wide columns kind of give a little bit more space. So um, what I mean to say is larger text. So if you take your select tool and go kind of on the corner of the handle of the box that goes around your text and drag it to be bigger and make it so that the columns are wider, that's going to help with, you know, to give enough space for the spirally effect to take effect. For mine, I did actually a script. So I did my initials and an anniversary script font. And I just simply typed in my T and C for my initials and said apply. Yeah. And then from there, um, you know, you can decide kind of how big you want it to be. It says it's 42 millimeters tall. If you didn't want to deal in mil millimeters, you can right click on your ruler get that to be in inches and now you know that you're you know 1.6 inches tall um, you know I was thinking a big kind of like big monogram to make kind of the spiral flex be really dramatic and show off so I made a bigger one like that there's three and a half inches make it as many inches as you want anyway once you've decided on the size of it the thing that you're gonna notice right away is if you try to apply that spiral satin effect to your text segments it's not an option and so there's, you kind of have to learn, I guess, a little bit of a workaround because when you create text, the software assumes that we're going to be doing a certain style of embroidery. And that's, you. if you want to change the type of stitch, you would come in your properties box onto the fill tab where you can change it from a satin fill to let's say a pattern fill or any kind of a random or smooth fill that you want. Um, but to get it to be the other kind of fancier decorative still fill types, there's kind of a workaround for that. So in that case, what we do is, I'll just start from the beginning. Click on your select tool and click onto your text segment. And you can tell it's a text segment if I look in the sequence view, it says that it's a text segment and it's basically the letters T and C in one segment that's text. And if I click on the, that segment to select it and then right click over top, I get a little menu that gives me an option called break up text. And when I choose break up text, what it does is it basically creates, it sort of separates them. And so now if I look in my sequence view, there's a T and it's not a text segment, it's a satin path and a C and it's a satin path and a satin path. That's what all of these styles of stitching are. They're basically what we call a satin path. And this one here is the spiral satin. And so basically now I can just click on spiral satin and I get that cool dramatic effect. Click on the T and click on spiral satin. And so as quickly as that, you can take your initials, type them out, make it a little bit larger, break it apart, and then you can you know quickly apply this effect. So it doesn't take too much to get used to. The, th the one thing I did do once I got to this level was I took my select tool and I clicked on the C because they're now separated um, individual segments and like moved it so that I could make it be more like an 
a, a monogram, like an initial, right? So that they were interlocking like that a little bit. And yeah, that's how it basically stitches out. It does this cool spirally effect. So, okay, I could stop right there and say that's all you need to know, but let's just kind of break it down to how it works, just to make sure that we learned a little bit today. Um, you can use this for any shape, whether you make the shape or whether it's a basic shape you already have um, or embroidery that you've already got. But if I look in my custom shapes for some sort of a little basic shape, like this little bird shape. OK, so here I have a piece of artwork and with a piece of artwork. So it's it's no long. It has never been created or converted into embroidery yet. So when I select it, all of the styles are available at the bottom. And if I choose to do something like a spiral satin, what happens is it waits for me to tell it which it needs at least one stitch direction. In other words, it's waiting for me to click and drag to give it at least one of those. And then if I right click twice, it'll draw the little swirlies. And so you can try it with any shape you want, even if you want to take your little basic shape tool and draw yourself a little ellipse. You know, it's a piece of artwork click on it and then click on your swirl tool and it's waiting for you to give it a stitch direction and then right click twice now why twice is because of the starting and the ending points because you can change them and as it is right now just looking at this shape this would be a good reason to talk about them because if you start to notice the stitching, like notice if I move the X, the red exit point to halfway across the shape and hit enter or apply, see how it walks down the middle and then sews back. And so a lot of times if you really want to make your spirals look the best and not have any stitching kind of down the middle, you like to set those green and red entry and exit points. Well, in this case, it's just I've noticed that if I just fuss over them a little bit and hit apply, I can get rid of that funny little stitch there. So if you ever see a funny little stitch there, it was because of the where that spiral starts sewing and it was confused. You know, I don't know how else to describe it other than that's how I fix it. Right. So um, let's try again. If you take a basic shape, maybe it's a rectangle this time and you draw your rectangle and you select it and you click on the type, it gives you one stitch direction. If you don't like it, you can change it to be whatever angle that you want. You can add new ones, as many as you want. And then when you right click, you can affect the green beginning and the red exit points. And when you right click again, it puts down the stitches. And now by putting the green entry and the exit points here and here, it made that funny little line that I don't like. So I can move them around to kind of fix the way it sews. And so this is where I'm saying with fun looking for just the right places, you can clean that stuff up. So that's how the tool works. It's called the spiral satin. It's down here on the bottom with basically any shape that you want. And that is how you can take your text segments, use the break up option, break apart text. So Let's just quickly do it for you guys one more time. I hope this video is not getting to be too long, but we click on text, start with a basic text segment. It's probably going to be like just under an inch tall and that's fine, but make it whatever initials that you want to do. Hit apply and then select that. So click on the select tool and then right click and say break up text. Now at this point, I can go ahead and try it. They're not real big. They're under an inch tall. And if I click on that spiral of fat satin, see what I'm saying, how it doesn't really get the full effect that I want. Now, if you make that bigger, it works out just fine. So basically once you've set that spiral of satin effect, you can kind of see where, how, what's your minimum before it's gonna kind of give you the effect that you want. So once you get it there, you're like, yeah, that's perfect. Then click on, I guess, the T. It's not, I, you know, I did because I already broke them apart. Now I'm resizing them, so they may not match in size. Um, if that mattered to me, I guess there would be lots of ways to do that because I could easily um, just take note of the size of this one, 2.8, and make that one also be 2.8. Um, like I said, there's lots of ways that you could mathematically do it. 
Um, or you could have just done it in the first place, Trevor, which was it would have made more sense. But yeah, you'd basically create yourself a little monogram like that. So that is how I do it. And that's where I will stop this video. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. And until next time, I hope you have a great day. And bye-bye.